Have you figured out your niche? Are you helping adding value to other people's lives? Then you're in the right place. Welcome to Munira's Musings with your host, right, Munira yeah. Zahabi. Greetings from Chicagoland. This is Munira from Chicagoland. And it's Munira's Musings. It's Monday. We are here. We are showcasing Javan Avant. Javan, welcome to Munira's Musings. Thank you for having me. I'm glad to be here. Thank you. Um, so, we're going to talk about finance. Most people think finance is having money in the bank. But many people do not worry or think about the future or what they're going to do once they retire. Many people have a good job. Many people just work nine to fives at a, you know, at a job that doesn't sustain them for a long time. So how do people survive after they retire? And one of the things that I have learned from my friend Javan is that you have to plan. So this interview is going to talk about finance and it's going to talk about financial planning first and then having enough money so that you can retire without having the hiccups of what am I going to do next. I've been in that position without a job, without any savings, and I know exactly how that feels. So without further ado, let's talk to Javan. Javan, tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay, um, so once again, thanks for having me. Um, so I, I'm a financial advisor. I've been in the industry for almost four years. I actually uh, started with Northwestern Mutual, so I learned a really a lot about insurance and really how to do insurance within planning, within financial planning. So about a about almost a year and a half ago, I expanded to an independent wealth management firm called Midwest Legacy Group uh, with the intentions on just trying to be able to do more for my clients. So being at Midwest, we are an agnostic firm. So I have relationships with all the top wealth management platforms like Morningstar, Vanguard, Fidelity, BlackRock. And on the risk management side, we work with a lot of top insurance companies too, like One America, Emeritus. But our really our job is to empower and support people and help them make smarter financial decisions. So when it comes to like retirement planning, it's, it's more comprehensive and holistic. So we are fiduciaries. Uh, so we have to do what's in the best interest of our clients. And our job is to help our clients, you know, grow their money and handle their money with the highest standard of care but we're also here to make sure that we you know talk about things that might be a risk right we want to mitigate as many risks as possible and one of the risks that while we're accumulating wealth um to retirement is making sure that we have income protection right so what happens if we get sick and hurt on our journey and all we have coming from our job now is just to pay our bills we have now lost the ability to save and invest so having conversations around that bringing things to our clients attention like we are on the same side of our clients um in a perfect analogy we would like to be a, a c uh the cfo uh, and they'd be the ceo so we don't tell our clients what to do pretty much educate. so okay so you talk about what happens if you get a hurt in the job but let's start from the beginning when a person starts a job it could be at any age what is the first thing they have to do to put some money away? I mean, most people live pay to, paycheck to paycheck and they'll say, I don't have money to find out, to, to put away. So what do you tell people like that? Um, it, it's, all, it's habits, right? So it's how we kind of look at ourselves. So number one kind of concept that we teach around well-building, are, are we paying ourselves first? Because human nature, we tend to pay the bills, we pay all these people, we're going to say we're going to say it was left over. So after we pay all the, you know, um, we pay everybody at the end, we still want to have fun. So we don't have uh, money really left over to save. But if we made ourselves a priority and paid ourselves first and made the, the bills work around that, what's left over after all of that would be just fun money. So it's really how we change our habits, you know, going through a budget, kind of seeing where we spend our money at, and starting somewhere that's meaningful and doable to do the habit. Right? If that's saving fifty dollars a month, that's saving a hundred dollars a month. You know, whatever that is for you at that moment, you know, start where something is meaningful but doable, right? But you don't want to, you know, push yourself to the point where it's stressful. Financial planning and saving should be stressful. 
so fifty dollars a month right you, you say so if most people get paid twice a week or every uh, every two weeks or you know you'd get the gist then they are saving twenty five dollars a paycheck and that's like maybe uh, two cups of coffee or three cups of coffee or breakfast out or something okay so you say that but then where do they put this money they decided they want to do this now that from work they may or may not be getting a 401k so how do then they do they start so uh, something like that you know we focus on a habit right you start in your bank account even though the bank account you earn 0 0.01 and we teach strategies that you know to strengthen that set that segment and you know we can move it from there but when we first started putting you know developing a habit um you know they you know you probably just now really building up your emergency fund right so a certain thing that you know you, you got to build up so maybe that you know that 25 dollars every paycheck will go until you building up that emergency fund right and then when we got up, then we can start looking to fill up other buckets and doing other strategies and things like that. But we want to start somewhere. And it's sometimes just a habit of actually putting money away. You like, okay, I can do this, right? And then you might start making a little bit more money or you might pay down a bill and now you got a new money uh, come in. And then it's like, we're talking. I know that you just paid off a day. And I say, hey, uh, what are you going to do with that extra $200 now that you have paid off that debt? Right. How much of that do you want to save? So now you might be saving one hundred and fifty dollars a month instead of, you know, 50. But you, you you're building. OK, so now you've put it in. in uh, but you've put it in a savings account. But now you're talking about building wealth and building wealth doesn't happen unless you start talking to a financial advisor, somebody like you. Right. So if I know nothing about nothing. People play stock markets. I used to work at a pharmacy and I used to have a lady who, a nurse who would just uh, be checking her stock every single day and then she would either buy it or sell it or something and I, I never figured it out. So how do then people get so savvy and then what do you do with the money in the, in the, in the savings account and how much money do you need to start talking to an advisor? So like like so me meeting people where they are and how I'm set up, you, you start talking as early as you can, right? When you feel like that you can really sit down and have an hour conversation and really seek the, the information, that's that's when you start. So people when when I see people, you know, kind of thinking they're kind of savvy a little bit with the market, um it's, it's really habits. The way we kind of work around our planning is more long term and really trying to accomplish that goal, right? So for some of our clients, if I process, they say, hey, I want to retire at 55, 60, you know, 55. Okay, how much money do we need to be putting away to, to hit that goal, right? What buckets are we using? But we have options to, we, we're not going to be putting you into like risky different things, right? And we get clients that have more than 100,000 in assets they're working with a CFA, a portfolio manager. So the foundation of how we say, do we have an emergency fund? Do we have a bucket that's growing outside the market? Like, so the problem that we have in retirement right now is people are accumulating money in buckets and things like that. They don't really understand how much income comes off that pile of money. And that's the question that we answer, right? We understand the distribution rate. So we're here on both sides of the journey. As you climb the mountain at the top is financial independence. But on the way down is very important too. That's the distribution of the wealth, right? So if you just have a 401k and it's a million dollars in a 401k, you only can take about $30,000 a year off that pile of money, right? And then if it's only in the market, what happens when the market goes down like we're experiencing right now? So if we don't talk about the, the uh, foundational pieces, people are, that, that it's hard to invest over long periods of time. Like if you just start putting money in the market and you don't have an emergency fund, something's gonna happen and you're gonna go take the money out the market. A lot of people brought Amazon before Amazon was Amazon, but they couldn't keep it because they, they didn't build it from a, a foundational point. Wow. I mean, I'm trying to make sense of all of this. So you are saying that you need to start planning. So give us a few tips, three tips on how you can start planning. You said put away some money, but I mean, how do you figure out if I'm going to retire at this particular age, how much money I need? You don't so, know. 
So the first question that we ask, depending on, on who, who we're talking, who, who I'm talking to, um, if I'm talking to somebody young, you know, we're really talking about the foundation, even though even older people, they still need it. If let's say they're in their 40s and they're about 20 years, you know, away from retirement, it's first is figuring out what your goals are, right? What are you trying to accomplish, right? Let's take it 10 years out. The next 10 years, what are you trying to accomplish? So do you expect to have a raise? And if that raise, what do you think you might get up to? And just kind of having that conversation. And we talk about income. So a lot of people think in retirement that they're, they're going to need less money in retirement. Um, so you either want to, you know, what we ask, do you want to make about the same and then when they say, yeah, I probably want to make about the same, then we introduce them to new thoughts because they think they're going to need less, but they're not thinking about health care and retirement. You don't have a job anymore. You have to pay for health care now. Uh, they don't, they're not thinking about taxes. What's the taxes in the future? We don't know. We don't know what the taxes are, right? We don't know what environment we're going to be going through if it's an inflation environment. So in our distribution rate, how much can we pull off this pile of money so it's kind of kind of talking to them like, okay, if you're making uh, five thousand dollars a month, we want to just shoot for seven thousand dollars a month, right? And then we can figure out how much we need to save to get to that seven thousand, right? Um, so it's just kind of it's kind of split up. Like some people, they have more short-term goals that we have to answer. That's by priority. Uh, even though long-term planning is important, uh, we're not here just saying, okay, sock all your money up for retirement and don't hit none of the goals that you have kind of midterm short term so we might have to answer some of those like i had a, a younger client he was 18 and he he reached out to me he was like hey i, I opened up a roth but he's investing into his business and things like that so him opening up a roth really doesn't really make the most sense to have a roth because he can't touch that money until 59 and a half so when you have an understanding like how these buckets work and how these tools can be leveraged then um, I think people just need to start with first finding someone that they trust uh, that they believe that, you know, have their best interest and who's going to provide the education and be able to feel comfortable enough to ask the questions because a lot of people don't know this, right? Uh, and it's not a, something that we're taught and it's common. So being vulnerable enough to say, hey, I don't know what I'm doing and asking somebody questions. And if you don't get it, still ask questions, right? Because us as advisors, you can't, you can't in a, uh, irritate an advisor or feel like we feel like you should know something. We we understand and then we understand where we were while we learning all these things. Uh, so um, that's gonna be my advice to people to kind of get started, to kind of find someone they trust. Okay. so. Um you said to find that's the first thing is find somebody who, who you can trust and then figure out how much you want in the next um, how much you want for the next whatever and then you can figure out how much if you figure out how much your monthly um, expenses are then you can figure out how much you need to save right that's what you're saying okay right. what is the third one and where we can people find you uh, people can find me on LinkedIn uh, at Joanna Vaughn. I'm not sure if I can, um, my number displayed on there too, but uh, that's J-A-W-A-A-N, last name of Vaughn, A-V as in Victor, A-N-T, uh, on LinkedIn, uh, the company Midwest Legacy Group. If you go to the website, uh, you'll see me on the website. Um, th th those are the best places to find me, or you can you can send me a text or a call, 773-396-4912. Uh, um, so. I'm available. Right. Thank you so much. So, you know, this is a very interesting subject, building wealth, because everybody wants to make a difference in everybody's life. And you are making an exceptional, great difference because you are adding value, money, monetary value. And people don't have to do much, but they just have to change a few things in their life to start building wealth. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, this could be another conversation. This could be a whole class. But you have a free book, right, that um, people can get? So something that I've been doing, because education is important for me. I mean, I pay for the book, but I'm sending it out to people um, who are interested and kind of learn. It's called The Power of Zero. And it kind of understands and start breaking out down different buckets of where we put money at. But um, if you go on LinkedIn, um, a link will pop up. 
as far as the power of zero. And then you, you can actually put some time on my calendar that we can talk for 30 minutes and I can share more about people individually about who we are, what we do, and see if we could be a resource. Because the thing about it is our, our work is real individual. Uh, it's really based off what the client is trying to do. We don't have like a cookie cutter approach. So sometimes having that one-on-one -on -one conversation, that's kind of like the best start. It's kind of having that conversation. So you can reach out, I can send you a free book and um, we can talk too. Okay, so in the show notes, I will have the link to the show long. And the thing is that you need you need to know if you are making money right now, that's a good thing. And you need to put away some money for the future, go ahead and do that as well. And if you really need somebody to talk to, because I've met several financial advisors financial in my advice. time, and I've lost a few um, along the way because that's another question I had, Javan, is that how do we know that you're not going to take me for the money? You're not going to make me run for my money. When you say make you run for your money, uh, can, you, can you elaborate a little bit? <laughs> you know what I'm saying. It's like people take my money, invest it, and then they say I lost it all, but they took it all. You know, I mean, it's happened before. Right. So the, the, those are people who have like um, access to. So we don't have your money. Like, so your money is held at Fidelity or Bank of New York or the, from the Persian arm. Uh, and then we have a portfolio manager that's helping with because your assets are big enough. They're Morningstar, they're, they're CFAs. So your money is not here directly with us. Now they actively manage your, your portfolio, but they can't, um, they can't withdraw, they can't take money out. And then you get performance reports, right? So you get these quarterly reports, you get people talking to you. And I don't have access to doing anything with your account. Like when I help you open up your account, it's in your name. It's in, you know, it's all your login information. Only thing that I can do is if you email me, and it has to be an email from you on file. If you tell me to um, that you want to have 500 come out your bank account into the thing, I can send that in, in an email to Fidelity and say, hey, a client wants to have a transfer, but it has to come from your email as far as the attachment of pitch, right? So <laughs> you don't have access to these things. To A lot of people think like, uh, Athletes and things that have a lot of money, they release power of attorney to these people, right? So the power of attorney, they have power to take funds out and do all these things. Uh, we don't, we don't uh, have any of our clients sign a power of attorney. That's not the type of advisors we kind of pretty much. We more on a relationship side of things. Okay. And really, you know, relationships with people. Right. Thank you so much for putting that into clarity for me. But thank you, and you know, people. Um, Finance is a big thing. We're all in this world to make some money, to make a difference. And if without money, nothing goes around. But mm -hmm. your well-being comes first. And this is one way to do self-care. Thank you, Javan. Um, you said to find you on LinkedIn. And your phone number, you, you gave us a phone number. Could you repeat that? Uh, the phone number is 773-396-4912. And another thing where I add when you're looking for an advisor, make sure you're looking for an appreciate. Right, and if they operate in a, uh, from a fiduciary capacity because that gives you legal protection as well. Because we have to write sentences of why this makes the best interest for clients. So you got a certain level of protection because we got a compliance department that's really heavily. Um, and if we don't do what's in your best interest, you can sue. Uh, so that kind of gives you kind of legal protection. So when you, you know, talking to a financial advisor, that's a good question to ask is, are you a fiduciary? Okay. So there you go, folks. If you, <laughs> if you like what you're hearing, then go ahead and connect with Javan because I met him on LinkedIn and we connected and we thought he's got some good material that my listeners could listen to. Now, this is only for folks in the United States, not international, right? Um, I can help. If they're a permanent citizen, I can do the investments. If they're not a permanent citizen, I can help them with some concepts like infinite banking, like using life insurance. Because I have some clients that are not permanent citizens right now uh, that, I, that I work with. So I just can't be uh, the advisor on their investments. I can help them open up their accounts themselves, but I just can't actually get paid for it. But I will still offer knowledge and education around it. If they have got questions, it's not a problem for me. Okay. I appreciate it and thank you very much. For, folks, we'll see you um, on our next show next week. 
we, when we showcase another person because folks we've changed a little bit we're changing our branding we're changing a lot of things but the thing is that our hearts are still remaining we in the place where we want to help people this advice that we bring people to they share their stuff their their knowledge their expertise their experiences all of that stuff is amazing partly because we want to keep it in the house and it's going to help you if you are looking for in this episode we're looking for somebody who is you know wants to just invest and start putting things away it doesn't matter what age you are because longevity is helping these days but so you need to be financially stable when you are done with your job and with that you can meet with Javand and continue from there but thank you all for listening we'll see you on another episode next week thank you and have a good week bye Thank you for listening to this episode of Munira's Musings with your host, Munira Zahabi. If you enjoyed our show, please share and subscribe to this channel. And for more content, please join our Facebook group.